guys, I'm Deidre and I am excited to start chatting about all of the gear that I am going to be bringing on my Nobo Pacific Crest Trail hike this year. Today we're going to go over things like my sleep system, my cooking system, some of the clothes I'm going to be bringing. So if you want to see the full gear breakdown, definitely stay tuned. I'm going to be going over everything that I'm going to be taking inside of my backpack throughout the whole entire journey and why I decided to choose some of the gear that I went with. So let's get into it. So we're gonna start with the sleeping system and I am going with the Zen Baby sleeping system. I'm so excited to be their 2024 through hiker ambassador. So they're going to be sharing some of my journey over on their page and you can watch mine on my channels as well. But the reason why I love the Zen Baby sleep system is because it's basically like you're sleeping at home. It is a five part system. It's basically just as light as everything else, but it's just broken into different parts. It's not that hard or complicated to set up, but it is so freaking comfortable. It's like nothing else. I have tried mummy bags in the past. They felt very constricting, can't really move around. Whereas with the Zen Bivy, now testing it out for a few times, I feel like free. It keeps me really warm. It's comfortable. I absolutely love it. This is the 10 degree down. I sleep a little cold. So this will basically keep me warm at nights when it gets down to below freezing. The other part to the system is actually this sheet. So this sheet is going to go over the Zenbivy Flex air matches that I'll show you later on. But it basically just attaches around. It's like I said, at home, you're sleeping on a sheet. So it's really quite nice. It's got this hood on the top. So if you, you know, are a little cold, you can put the hood over. It's also down, so it keeps you very warm. So what I love too, is that it's all color coded. It's easy to put the whole entire system together. And if you wanna learn more about that, you can go check out their website. Um, they are really good at describing everything on how the whole entire system works. So definitely go check them out. The other part to the system is the Zembivy UL Flex Air Mattress. It's their ultralight version. It's waffle shaped, very comfortable, similar to the Nemo Tensor, except I find this to be more comfortable, also less loud. Uh, I did sleep on the Nemo Tensor before and every time I moved, it was like and making a lot of really loud noises. This one is very silent, so I'm really excited and hopefully you know, people won't be too mad at me because they won't hear me moving around because I, I do like to toss and turn. Um, but yeah, this is very comfortable. It, as you can see, it's pretty small as well. So fits inside my bag really nicely. And the last part to the system is the pillow. This is a soft top two part pillow system. So it comes with the down pillow topper for comfort and it actually really packs down nicely so love that the second part is the inflatable portion where you can adjust the levels and the height of the pillow depending on how you sleep so it's basically plastic you blow air into it and it expands the other thing <laughs> i have to take it out because i was really excited about it they come with a pillowcase and i went with the lavender pink pillowcase because the whole entire system was a little bit too boyish for me with the whites and the blues. So I really wanted to spice it up, make it a little bit more girly and it's very comfortable. I did, I do want to mention too, it obviously works with the other portion of the system. So when you have the pillow set up, it clips so it doesn't slide. If you have been backpacking, you know, pillows can be a bit of a pain in the ass <laughs> so, uh, because they, you know they do slide around and they don't fit well inside of your sleeping bag and things like that so this is really great because everything works as a unit and nothing moves so it really does make your sleep a lot better so another thing i'm going to be bringing and i could change this throughout the journey i might not 
bring it, but I am going to go with this Nemo switchback pad too. Not necessarily to go under my sleeping mattress, but mostly to just be lounging on in the middle of the day and to have like a sit pad. It is big, but it could just stay on the outside of my bag. It's not that heavy. So really it's not adding that much weight and it'll be nice to be able to lay on throughout the day in the desert section. So I'm not laying in the dirt and things like that. Yay. Later on, if it is too big, I might cut it in half and go from there, so. The next thing we're gonna look at is my shelter, my tent. So that is the Nemo Hornet Osmo two-person tent. What I love about this is, as you can see, it's square, it packs down, it's light. Um, I had a big Agnes Copper Spur one-person tent and it was much longer. It didn't fit inside my bag as good. It was a lot smaller. I felt a little congested inside. So this is much bigger. The setup is really easy. I can do this alone. I've tested it out. Um, and Nemo is just like a really good popular brand that most people use. So I felt really comfortable investing in their tent. The reason I switched to this and left the copper spur in the dust <laughs> is I've read some reviews about it online. I've heard about the poles breaking on the copper spur, water leaking through. And so it just didn't feel like the best investment. This was about $80 more, but for the space and for the reliability, I felt like it was the best move. The Nemo doesn't come with the footprint. You do have to buy it separate, but I bought it and I think it'll be worth it while I'm out there. All right, let's go into cooking system. Yeah. Next, we're gonna talk about my cooking system. I think this is like a pretty classic system. It's not the most ultra light because a lot of people will go with like titanium and things like that to keep it light. But I decided to go with the Jetboil Stash. It's not that big. Oh. Hello. What I love about it is that everything fits inside of the pot. As you can see, um, I did add this extra cloth. So when I'm done boiling water, I can just basically wipe it out and leave no water inside to prevent rust and things like that. The propane actually fits nicely on the lid. So that's really cool. The burner fits inside. You can fit a lighter inside and the stand inside. That all fits inside nicely. <laughs> I am actually creating a video all about what I'm going to be eating. And for me specifically, it's gonna be a lot of dehydrated meals. So one thing I loved about the stash is that it boils really quickly and also that it's compact. It's got this silicone lid so that when it is hot, I don't have to worry about burning my hand. Or oh, sorry, <laughs> I thought I said silicone handle. It's got this silicone handle. So when I am boiling um, hot water often, I don't have to worry about burning my hand. What else? Overall, it's a really great system. And for the price, I'm really happy with it. One of the most important things that I'm going to get on trail is water and how I'm going to be filtering that so I don't get sick or get things like Giardia. So the system, two part system that I'm going to be going with is the CNOC system with the Sawyer squeeze. So basically how it's gonna work is the CNOC has a water bladder which the dirty water will go into, the Sawyer squeeze, acts as a filter and attaches here at the bottom, which will then filter into one of these bottles with the clean, fresh water. So another really great thing about this system is that it's collapsible. It's really lightweight. Um, these are both one liter. So I'll have two liters of water here. The splatter can carry two liters as well for long carry days. That means I'll be up to four liters. And then I'm also planning to bring a smart, two smart water bottle, one liters as well. And that actually works perfectly with the Sawyer Squeeze as well. So I love that. The Sawyer Squeeze also comes with a bag of accessories like sports cap and some extra little, what are these things? Adap and some extra like adapter things to make sure that the whole system is working together and in one. 
So this is my whole entire water system that I'm going to be bringing. Uh, let's see for our uh, clothes. Alrighty, let's talk clothes. So I'm actually wearing one of my items. <laughs> it's the fleece, Kota Paxi. So obviously uh, this is going to keep me warm at night and through the day. My other thing is my Cotopaxi hat. Uh, love Cotopaxi brand. I think it's really fun. They're, they recycle everything, so really cool. So this actually is going to act as my base layer. I'm not going to be bringing a separate long sleeve base layer. This is going to be what I wear at night to make sure that I'm staying warm. The next thing that's going to act as another layer on top of this, if, if I'm getting really cold, is my puff. And this is from REI. It's a Magma 800 down. So this will just basically get on top of the fleece and keep me really warm. I have tried it. I have hiked with it before and it does keep me really warm. So, and it matches. These, uh, these two will be great for places when I'm hiking in the Sierras where there's still snow or if it's like a really windy day and things like that, these will work really well and keep me warm. Underneath these two things, I am going to be wearing through the desert section specifically a lot, or if it's a really hot day, my sun hoodie. This is from Mountain Hardware. This will basically protect me from getting burnt. Um, it has 50 SPF, SPF, right? It has 50 SPF, so it really helps on those really hot days. It's got this little thumb loop here, so it hides my hands because you don't think to put sunscreen there, but you can burn your hands if you're just basically out like this all day long. So this is what I'll be wearing through the desert section. And it's got a hood, so it can go over on top and it can prevent my face and things like that and my sides from getting burnt. I'll be bringing another shirt. This is more going to be a T version. Um, it is from North Face. And it's just a basic tee that I'm going to be wearing under everything. And if it's like a hot summer night, like through July, I can just wear this instead of wearing a base layer while I'm going to sleep. Um, and that'll keep me a little bit cooler and things like that. On the bottom, I am going to be wearing biker shorts, REI version. I love these because they prevent chafing. As a gal who has some thicker thighs, I definitely am prone to chafing and we don't want that. <laughs> um, so biker shorts is my go-to. It has these really cool pockets so I can put like snacks in there or quick easy access things that I need to get to. And I just really like biker shorts instead of the like kind of mid-layer capri version. So I am excited to bring these with me. For at night, I am actually going to be bringing base layer pants. This is just again to keep me warm from REI and I'll be sleeping in these every night. They're wool and these will keep me warm basically when it's cold at night. I'm also gonna be bringing two pairs of hiking socks. They're darn tufts, one pair of sleeper socks and a Injinji liner sock. Three pairs of underwear. Some people like to bring one. Mm, I'd rather bring three. I feel a little bit cleaner. <laughs> and I also went with the Smart Wool Toque. Smart Wool because it prevents smells and things like that. So, you know, if you're always wearing something, you get sweaty and it starts to stink. So this will prevent that and also keep me warm. And my little buff headband that I thought was cute. And just really quickly, my sports bra from Reebok that I'm going to be bringing. Lastly, one of the most important parts I think is rain gear. So I went with a really high quality rain jacket and rain pant from REI. I love this color because I love orange, I think is fun, but it also for safety, you know, if I were to get lost or something were to happen, this is a really good safety color to basically get seen a little bit better while I'm out there. These aren't Gore-Tex, but it is a really high quality waterproof material. Let's talk about footwear. So footwear, you can go with a few different options. You can go with hiking boots, hiking shoes, or trail runners. 
I was only really familiar with actually hiking boots and hiking shoes for a while, but with my research, I was put on to some ultras, running shoes. And I think the reason why a lot of people really love this is because it's light, but it also has this really wide foot box. And I've now hiked in these like a few times and I can say that they are very comfortable, very spacious, and they are quality. They've got some really amazing grip here at the bottom so you can get up on rocks and things like that very easily. And they just seem really high quality. The brand's well known. And in general, I'm probably going to be going through about five pairs throughout the whole entire journey. So I will be getting new ones as I go along. For camp shoes, I decided to go with the Zero shoes, mostly to save on weight um, because they are very light. They're very bendy, so they really can just like go anywhere inside of the bag. And yeah, I thought they would be a really great idea to go on the trail with. Really quickly, <laughs> uh, this was meant to go with my cooking system, but this is the Sea to Summit long spoon that I'll be using to eat out of the meals, the dehyd out of the dehydrated meal bags. Let's talk about accessories. We'll start with the bug net. I've heard in Oregon specifically, the bugs get terrible. So I went with a bug net to basically prevent bites while I'm out there and to feel like I'm not gonna go insane. I went with micro spikes for the Sierra sections and when I get up higher elevations on the mountains, um, the micro spikes uh, brand, Kahula micro spikes. And this is basically just to help me get better grip while I'm on the snow. The other thing that I went with, because I'm not putting a liner inside of my bag, I went with a basically pack rain cover, simple brand from REI. And that's basically to prevent all of my stuff from getting wet inside of the bag. Next are some mitts. This is just to keep warm. They're windproof and weatherproof. So just, you know, when my hands get cold and things like that, it's to make sure that I don't get freezing fingers. <laughs> and <laughs> last, um, I decided to grab some gaiters. Not everyone goes with gaiters, but this is just to put on to my shoes, clip onto my shoes and just prevent like dirt and rocks from getting inside of my shoes because that would feel awful <laughs> after a while. Another couple items that I forgot with my cook system is my Zembivy titanium mug. This is what I'll be using while I have my coffees in the morning. It's titanium, so it's really light um, and it's just easy to store. This I will be using for my protein shake actually, and it's collapsible, which I really love, but you can just open it up like this, pour the protein shake inside, put the lid on, shake it up, drink out of it, put, pour some water in there really quickly, but it's just really easy and it's collapsible and I'll be using this for my protein shakes. Uh, some other accessories I have are my Petzl headlamp. This is uh, just battery operated. You don't have to charge it or anything like that. So I've had this already from past multi-day backpacking hikes. So there will be also some night hiking and things like that. So I will be bringing a headlamp. <laughs> we'll go into kind of more safety items now. So we'll start with the first aid kit. And I actually just went over all of this today, took it out of this first aid kit essentially that I bought from REI put it into some Ziploc so that it was much lighter. But all the basics, medication, a tick, what is this? Tick remover, uh, polysporin, gauze. I put a tampon in there just in case. Um, gloves, uh, some, I'm saying um, glue, moleskin, leuco tape, just all the classics that I think I would need in case there were an emergency and I needed to get into my first aid kit. Uh, a couple other safety items are bear spray and a knife. Some people don't bring these. Uh, I really value my safety and I know this is extra weight, but like I said, I'm not an ultralighter, so I'm gonna be carrying the weight so it shouldn't really matter to anybody else. And this just gives me peace of mind while I'm out hiking in bear country, 
and cougar country. I have this just in case these animals, wild animals, were to potentially come at me. I at least have something to basically protect myself. And while I'm sleeping at night alone, it just gives me peace of mind as well in case any weirdos or whatever were to happen, I have these to protect myself. A knife too is just really good survival tool in general. If I were to go missing, it's just, you know, a good thing to be able to cut open bags split with, logs. split logs, uh, and any other survival thing that you might need to do. <laughs> Hopefully I don't get lost. For carrying my food, I'm actually going to be bringing the Ursac. It's the 15 liter bag, so it carries about five to seven days of food inside. This is just gonna be my dehydrated meals and stat or dehydrated meals and snacks inside. And basically this is just a good heavy duty bag to prevent bears from getting into and critters and things like oops, <laughs> critters and things like that. So the Ursac, it's a classic, it's really reputable, everyone brings it out there. There will be sections where I will be needing a bear can, but that'll be kind of as I go throughout the trail, I'll pick that up. And then besides that, I'll be using the Ursac in between those sections that you need a bear can. Let's go over some of the toiletries that I'm going to be bringing. I'm actually going to be carrying these inside a Zembivy stuff sack and just another little bag. So inside my toiletries bag, I'm going to have my retainers, toothbrush. And what I like about this too is that um, it all kind of works together, but this is a refillable toothpaste tube at the bottom. So I thought that was cool. Body glide. So if there's any chafing happening, body glide will come in handy. Insect repellent lotion. I actually saw a girl saying that she liked this over the spray. So I thought I would give it a try. I usually go with spray, but insect repellent lotion sounds kind of fun too. Sunscreen, obvi. <laughs> we don't want to burn. We want to prevent, prevent ourselves from getting skin cancer and things like that. So I went with the Badger Mineral Sunscreen Cream 50 SPF. Also got this little tube from REI. I put my face lotion inside of there. Picked this up from the dollar store. It is a little brush. It basically compacts down easily, pushes up, you get the brush, and it's got a little mirror on the side as well. So I can see how haggard I look. <laughs> I also just thought I would bring two extra elastics. You can't go wrong with one or two extra elastics. Those are easy to lose. And then I actually found these really cool little makeup removers. So I'll just bring individual ones about four to five each time. Actually, I don't plan to wear makeup at all, but it's just to get off like dirt and things like that and sunscreen and that stuff that feels really gross at the end of the day. We're gonna go over my poop kit now. <laughs> it's kind of funny saying poop kit. Um, so toilet paper, classic. You know what you use that for. <laughs> um, Cooler cloth, this will probably just hang on the outside of my bag, but it's a pee cloth. So basically you pee and then you wipe up. What I like about this is that it's washable as well. I also am going with the uh, Dr. Bronner's hand sanitizer. So that's just gonna be in between uh, potty breaks <laughs> to make sure that I'm cleaning everything and prevent myself from getting sick. I'm also gonna bring a, a package of porter wipes. I saw someone else using this. They're compressed towelettes essentially. Um, I'll start off with the toilet paper and the porter wipes and just see which ones I like the most and go from there. I will mention that you do just have to pour a little bit of water on here to expand it. So that was another reason why I thought bring the toilet paper because I wasn't sure if I would like doing that. And then the dirt saw deuce. This is to shovel up a hole to poop in. <laughs> and simple as that really. So that's my poop kit. Obviously I'm bringing some trekking poles. So I went with the black diamond. No, oh, well, like these are trekking poles. So they're just gonna help me basically be able to get my full body into the hike. And it also is good for like, kind of getting yourself up on the inclines. And yeah, trekking poles are just great in general. Now let's talk camera gear because I will be vlogging the whole entire journey. So we'll start with the tripod. I want the Joby. Um, it's really cool because you can extend these out and balance it. Um, this also extends up 
and gets taller. So if I want to go out and get some shots, I can expand this up. It's really cool because it compacts down. So when I'm just kind of doing like selfie vlogging, it's really compact. Um, you can also switch this over to be landscape and then whoop, tall as well. I don't think it's too heavy. Like it's obviously added weight, but I think it'll be very beneficial for getting shots while I'm out there alone. Maybe. And if I do decide like uh, it's just kind of getting in the way and I'm not really using it, I will just drop it in the van and go from there. Electronics, <laughs> electronics bag. Also another Zambivi stuff sack bag. So this is um, basically everything I'm bringing electronics wise. I'll start with my Beats headphones. You do have to charge these. Uh, these will probably last me like a few days without any charge. And um, we'll see essentially how that goes with my battery banks that I'm bringing. I am bringing two 10,000 milliamp Nightcore battery banks. So this is going to be what charges up my phones and my headphones and things like that. Here's the other one. Um, and I have a bunch of basically cords that I need to bring inside here. An adapter as well for charging everything up. I am probably going to bring this extra battery bank that I picked up. It's a 5,000 milliamp and I think it's just peace of mind to, to make sure that I'll have enough juice to essentially make sure my phone's always charged because I will be vlogging on the phone, editing on the phone, listening to music on the phone, reading books on the phone. And it has this uh, MagSafe at the back because I have an iPhone 15. It just connects right to the back. So while I'm kind of walking and I'm not really doing any filming, it can just sit and basically attach to the phone and charge it up. And the last piece of electronics is the most important one. It's my Garmin InReach Mini 2. It's my GPS device. I'll be able to send messages to my friends and family. Uh, they'll be able to see my location and things like that throughout the whole entire journey. And if there were to be any accidents or anything like that, they have the SOS button and people will come help me. And what will I be carrying all this gear with? Well, I went with the Deuter Air Contact 45 plus 10 liter. The reason why I went with this and didn't go with an ultra light bag is um, it's just very comfortable, especially for someone who is a little bit more, I don't know, on the thick side. You know, someone who has like a little bit more bigger bone and on the thicker side, it just feels a little bit more comfortable sitting on my hips and on my shoulders and things like that. And the ultralight bags just seem a little thin and you'd have to get all kinds of ultralight gear to make it make sense to go with an ultralight bag. I also went with the uh, Chicken Tramper little pouch here to carry my phone and my electronics throughout the day and the Chicken Tramper water bottle sleeve that fits perfectly with the C Knock water bottle inside. So that's everything I'm actually going to be bringing on the trail. I hope you really enjoyed watching it. I really love watching gear review videos and I'm going to be posting my whole entire gear list. You can just find it down below in the description. If you want to follow my journey, I'm going to be vlogging the whole entire thing on YouTube and social channels. So I would love it if you would support me, give me a like, a comment, maybe subscribe to follow along. Um, you can find me on my social channels. All of that information will be in the description description box below. And also you can find all the brands that will be supporting me and sponsoring me throughout the whole entire journey below as well. Go give them a follow and see you all on the trail. Happy hiking.